What's up? My name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be talking about how you can set up and host your own private vRising dedicated server. This way you can always have a server running for you and your friends to join 24 seven. It's completely free as long as you have an internet connection and a computer running all the time to run this server. Do note, as soon as you turn off your computer, your server will turn off as well. You do need to have a computer running the whole time. This isn't a free dedicated cloud server. This is you hosting the server on your own computer and internet. That being said, it does take up some resources. So if you have an especially limited computer, this may not be something you could look into. If you own vRising, you'll see a vRising dedicated server in your Steam games library under the tools section. If you don't see it anywhere on this section up here, expand it and make sure you have tools selected or simply searching for vRising, you'll find it under tools here. Anyways, all you need to do is double click on it and install it as you would any other Steam game. I'll install it to my E drive here just because it's a hard drive with extra space. You don't need to run this on a super fast SSD. When it's done downloading, we'll right click this, hover over manage and click browse local files. A new file browser will open up and we'll start off with the start server example dot bat. I'm running Windows 11 and I would highly recommend that you have the file extensions turned on so you can see dot bat, dot text, etc. On Windows 10, you can head across to view at the very top and simply tick view file name extensions and view hidden items. On Windows 11, the steps are very confusing for no reason. Pretty sure you go into the three dots, options, then in here, view and somewhere in this very long list, hide extensions for known file types, turn this off, and on top of that, hidden files and folders, simply select show hidden files, folders, and drives. Hit OK, and you should see file extensions. Right clicking service start dot bat, I'll click edit, and it'll open in a program like Notepad or whatever default text editor you have. You don't need anything fancy for this. Leave everything at the very top as is, all the way down to about here. This is where we can change our first service settings. We can change the persistent data path from save data, which will be a folder created in here. If you'd like to put it anywhere else, if it has any spaces in the file name, just remember to surround it in quotation marks as such. Server name, we can change to be whatever we want. I'll say troubleshoot. Save name, you can leave as is, but you can change this if you're gonna host multiple instances on the same computer, and the same goes for log file. If you're hosting more than one server, simply add a one, two, three, etc. to the end of this file name here, just before .log. Then we can save this, close this, and run this to generate files for our server the first time round. I'll leave this going in the background, and you should immediately see the logs folder, and shortly after the save folder, as well as whatever else is added here, including the new config folder, but we'll get there in just a moment. At this point, our server is probably running. It's not telling me too much information, unfortunately. I'll just close out of it here. After closing that black window, our server is now completely closed. The config folder over here has a config.vdf, but it doesn't have anything useful that we can change. To change settings, you'll need to head to a very specific persistent data folder on your computer. You can change this by editing the start server.bat and adding a hyphen persistent data path space followed by whatever place you'd like to put these. But by default, it's in your user profile, app data, local low, stunlock studios, V rising server. You'll find this in the description down below. Hold start, press R, copy and paste it in here and hit enter. Then this is our folder where all of our server settings will go. Unfortunately, this folder is currently empty. The default files for this, including server host settings and server game settings aren't located in here. Instead, you'll need to look inside the dedicated folder, then view rising server data, streaming assets, settings, and we'll see both of these here. In fact, we can copy all of these, right click, copy and paste them into the persistent data folder here. Note that you'll need to set a different persistent data folder if you're going to run multiple servers on the same computer. Anyways, we can open up server host settings for the first one, as this is where most of the important settings are going to be. Once again, there is a name, which we can set here instead, and this is what will override whatever settings we have in our main file. Main file, I mean the service starter file, which is over here. It's a good idea to have these set to be the same in both of these places. There we go. So I've simply updated the name to troubleshoot. Port, we'll need to remember this later. It's a good idea to copy this, 9876. 
and 9877. By default, as far as I see on their documentation, this should be 27015 and 27016, though they're not that here, which is rather odd, but anyways, these could be different for you. For me, they're 9876 and 9877. Make a note of both of these, I'll copy them and paste them into a separate notepad all the way across to the side of my screen. You can set a password, secure mode, etc. For me, I'll be leaving everything as is. I'll hit control S to save and close out of the server host settings. Then the other file is server game settings and inside of here we can change pretty much everything. PVP, we can change to PVE, etc, etc. And there's a ton of options in here that get really granular. You get tons of control over the server, which is great. Other than that, there's not too much we can play around with there. When you're happy with your settings, you can run start server example dot bat, which you should probably rename to just start or something like that. So whenever there's an update, it doesn't overwrite your settings, double click on it, and your server's now starting. People should be able to join very shortly, but not yet. There's a couple of extra steps. What does that mean? Well, someone sitting next to you on the same Wi-Fi network can likely connect to you as long as you don't have a strong firewall like an antivirus running. Windows is usually somewhat happy with that. What we need to do first is allow the game through our antivirus firewall or our Windows firewall if you don't have anything extra installed and we'll need to port forward whatever ports we have previously, which we made a note of, to allow people outside of our local network to connect to our computer. For the port forwarding section, I'd highly recommend you check out my super simplified guide linked in the description down below for both a single router between you and the internet and multiple routers between you and the internet as well. Things can get rather confusing, but those two videos break it down really simply. Just make sure to port forward 9876, 9877, or whatever the ports you have, as well as probably 27015 and 27016, the default they mention on their wiki page which I'll also have linked down below as well, just to make sure things work absolutely properly. So one, two, three, four, port forward all of these to your computer in particular. These are all UDP addresses, so just keep that in mind, they're not TCP. That being said as well, we need to allow it through our firewall. For this, I'll be showing you the Windows firewall as is the simplest and the most common. If you have an antivirus or third-party firewall software, you'll need to Google how to do that. Simply hit start and type in firewall and open up the Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. You should see something like this. If not, on the left-hand side of the settings window you have open, you should see something about advanced settings and you'll land up somewhere here. Head across to inbound rules and click new rule on the far right. Then inside of here, we'll select port, next, UDP, and we'll type in all four of our ports separated by commas. So for me, 9876, comma, 9877, comma, 27015, comma, 27016. I'll select all of these, copy them, and paste them into here. I'll click next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, and I'll give it the name V Rising. Enter, there we go. Then I'll head across to outbound rules, new rule once again, and then select port, next, UDP, paste in the ports, next, select allow the connection, next, or three, next, and I'll call it V Rising. There we go, super simple. We've now allowed it through our Windows firewall and we can get to port forwarding all four of these to our PC, which is super simple. Once again, guide linked in the description down below. At that point, you're able to Google what is my IP and give that IP address to your friends to directly connect to you. Otherwise, they should see you on the public server list. It's really simple. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Close this black window when you don't want to run the server anymore, and you will need to have that black window open by running start.bat or whatever you created in order to have the server running at all. So of course you will need your PC to be running. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name is Techno, but have a troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.